One, why are people feeling poorer? That's the key thing to understand. And then we can look at the debasement discussion. Real wages generally across the developed world haven't gone up in any meaningful way since about 1974. A lot of the gold bugs will argue that's because the US left the gold standard, et cetera, et cetera. That'll have something to do with it. Um, but more so with something else is in the US alone, 76 million people enter the labor force at the same time. Law of supply and demand said, if you increase the number of humans into a labor force, the price of labor is not gonna go up. So guess what? Labor was stagnant. And then what happened is all of those people started buying stuff all at the same time. They all turned 30 at the same time back in like 1980. And they bought everything, their first house, their first car, their first, and that created the great inflation. So that's demographics all over again. But then over that period, their wages didn't go up, but some goods did. And the wages didn't go up by a second kick in the teeth. And that was in 1996, at seven, uh, China entered the, well, the WTO agreement happened that put everybody in a level playing field. So now you're competing with, not only with these other baby boomers, but you're competing with everybody around the world. And then against that was the rise of the computer and technology. So you're now competing with the robots and the software and the people in India and the people in China and the baby boomers. And then all these people had the stupid idea of having kids all at the same time, which are the millennials. And now, because of longevity of life and expanding, because of the retirement crisis, having to expand people's retirement age, you've now got the baby boomers, the millennials, the globalized workforce, the robots, and the artificial intelligence all in the labor force at the same time. This is bad. So wages underperform most things over time. So kind of wages and CPI, wages have slightly outperformed, some goods, anything technology driven has collapsed. Um, all things like clothing, all of that stuff collapsed in price. Um, fixed things, you know, because all of the millennials went to school and university, cost of education went through the roof. You know, there's, so there's a, um, because the baby boomers got older, the price of healthcare went through the roof, right? Very quantifiable, understandable things that made people feel for, poorer because of actually demographics driving. It was not by some evil man twisting the dials. It was actually because of them themselves. They caused it. But there was another problem here is that as people realized that they weren't getting wealthier and some of these fixed assets were going up over time, housing, um, equity markets, other savings vehicles, because these are basically future savings, right? Investing in properties is a future release of capital when you've retired or you hand it over to your kids or whatever you do with it, but it's, it's a saving vehicle. And they were getting less access to savings vehicles. So what did they do over time as, as prices got more expensive and had to pay for this education, this healthcare and all this other stuff and this housing, they borrowed money. And then they borrowed more and more and more money to make up for the shortfall. When you actually adjust household balance sheets in the US, um, adding wages plus borrowings, it keeps in line with stuff like the S&P. But what they did was basically hold themselves out um, and create this massive indebted economy. And then meanwhile, these fixed assets were creeping higher. Cut to 2008 and something happened that none of us had dealt with before is they decide that they were going to do something called quantitative easing, which was buying bonds by printing money. And that no, it wasn't inflationary and it wasn't gonna go through the banking system and it was, it was mainly technical. And part of that's right. And it didn't cause inflation, really. CPI never was correlated to it. And so the central banks did more of it. And it kind of started stimulating markets and thought, they thought, oh, this is good. This helps out with the pension crisis and all of these people's savings. But the problem is, is these assets started taking off in price and the wages didn't. So now you can buy less of an ounce of, 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 a, of a ounce of gold or less of a house or less of a share of the S&P or whatever it may be. And then they continue to do this and this continues to happen. And people started saying it's the liquidity from the Fed flowing or from the central banks flowing into the markets. But when you actually look at the volume in equity markets, it's going down. Participation was going down for the entire decade that this was supposed to be a liquidity driven market. So where's the liquidity? Oh, it's hedge fund. None of this was true. What actually was happening is something more insidious, something more awful was the fact that the value of money itself, not the value of the currency, which is the dollar or the euro or the yen, the value of money 
was going down and the money was being debased because we were making more of it. So the same example of those baby boomers entering the labor force, too many people at the same time, too much money at the same time, made the value of money go down relative to the assets. Now, everyone goes, huh? But when you look at gold versus equities, that relationship's as old as both of those markets, goes back 100 odd years, and it's always been kind of in a range. Gold gets expensive, gold gets cheap, equities get expensive, equities. We're nowhere to suggest it's overvalued. And then you look at real estate against the same metric or real estate versus equities, and they all look kind of about right. And then you go, well, everyone's calling this the everything bubble, but we're not seeing this record volumes. It's because they've lowered the value of the denominator. So this is, once you get your head around this, you understand that the central banks have been expanding their balance sheets by about 15% a year, and therefore we're all getting poorer by 15% a year, which is why we've got populism and we're so miserable, because wages are not gonna close that gap. So even if wages go up 3% a year, you're 12% net worse off. And then you've got no interest rate in the bank. You can't put it in the bond market, you are screwed. So you just feel like, why can't I get anywhere? And this is why we can't get anywhere, because all the assets are going up in price and the things that are variable, like wages, don't go up. And that's where CPI comes in, because it's variable, because commodities you can make more of and fill supply, there's only some that have more fixed supplies. No, so when we talk about the migration, just so everybody's clear, there is a separate system that's basically being built, particularly in the financial world, that's based around blockchain technology. And it's this digital asset revolution that is a whole new world that is slowly seeing the great and the good migrate and the masses. It's like, it's a migration, which is great because that stops the end game of a blow up. The less people you have on the sinking ship, the less people it hurts, okay? And people are sensing that. The monetary dis debasement is one of the ways they get hurt. Uh, the pension crisis is another. I think that that migration is not smooth. Uh, anybody who's read The Fourth Turning understands these kind of societal transitions. And again, The Fourth Turning is demographics, to go yet back again to the mega theme, is the society is not ready for the rate of change that we're facing. And you can see it on Twitter, financial Twitter. There are people who just want the politics of nostalgia. I want to go back to gold. I want to go back to this. I want to go back to the 1950s. I want to go back. Get me to somewhere that I feel safe. And they fight the people who are saying, no, let's move forward because we can create something better. Everybody kind of fears change within this because we don't know what it is and it's changing so fast. That societal discord is not going to change for a while. It's not going to magically wake up and everyone say, you know what, we'd, let's embrace the future and technology. And this dystopian world is something that we should just go into. People just don't want to do it. And, you know, partly it's the baby boomers. So really, this generational shift, I mean, the average baby boomer is about 68 now, 67, 68 uh, in the US, slightly older in Western Europe. Um, and really, when they come out of the labor force entirely and come out of politics is when that transition will have been completed. And the millennial generation will have taken over with probably the Gen Xers, mainly in the leadership roles. And that, that transition is not gonna be good. Um, people will feel still left behind because this rate of change of technology, I mean, every single truck driver and taxi driver on earth is going to be out of a job in 20 years' time. Realistically, there's no point in having shops. I mean, that's what the COVID crisis taught us. This is, this is a lot of change.